every week for 50 for 50 something weeks and we're super excited now as that happens as you get settled in we're going to just jump right in i'm going to stop the music for now if you're enjoying it let me know then i can possibly find a link for you at the end of the session but right now we want to jump in straight it's four minutes past and i want to so two things one we're recording this session just uh just a bit of uh, housekeeping we're recording this session as you may have had the prompt the other one is uh, we will ask you to be kind and polite just a bit of courtesy even on a virtual session okay it's always welcome we have two areas we're going to be maximizing we have our chat section and that's what you've been using so you've been typing your name and your business and where what you're doing and where we can find you possibly even your contact Okay, now the other thing that we're going to do, uh, the other thing that we're going to use is the Q&A section, okay? I want you to use questions there. So type your question there, There's, but then I need you to remember that not all questions, because we have so many questions and so many people in the, in the space right now. So we'll have uh, questions there and we have uh, a, a technical team that's also behind the scenes so they can respond whether it's to the, uh, something the speaker has said, or when we get to speak about COP specifically, the questions will be answered. So look out for your answer there, but we'll do as many as possible as, possi as we can. We'll be asking our speakers and our different uh, people who will be interacting and our panelists, okay? So that's, so at least I know you're using the chat, there's the Q and A. Now that you know the lay of the land, I want to invite uh, Peter Tandumia, who is not a strange face, he's a very familiar face, the friendly face of this webinar. So Peter, please open up with a, a quick greeting and then a, a word of prayer. Many, many thanks, uh, Sam. I hope you can hear me. Perfectly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a very warm welcome to our customers and uh, good morning. Uh, as indicated, we just want to start this session and we want to start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, this morning we want to thank you. We want to appreciate your goodness and your mercies. Thank you for this session that you've given us. Thank you for the participants. Thank you for our customers. And thank you for the speakers for the day. As we go through the training for the day on debt management, we pray that Lord will help us to understand and also help <laughs> us to implement on the things that Lord we're going to learn. Continue supporting our businesses, oh dear Father, to grow. So that Lord, we are able to flourish and continue to grow. As we start this session, we invite you. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Peter. All right. So Peter is the head of non financials and is not a, a strange face. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you for a very good prayer. Now let me get you uh, quickly acquainted with some of the things that we want to let you know. Let me ask you a quick question. So there's a bit of information on the screen. Did you know, okay, and I want you to type one word that describes how you feel about that. Did you know that in 2022, which is this year, Kenyan household loans advanced by banks are currently at 843.5 billion? What, what's your quick comment on that? Give me a comment in the chat. What do you think about that? A quick comment. I, I don't know if all of you, yeah, Priscilla says, whoa, yes. <laughs> Enoch says, good, yes, very good. Let me see, what are your thoughts on this? You can type a quick word or an elaborate response. Either way, we shall receive it, okay? So there's some facts on the screen here. Like up until now, this year, we've had 843.5 billion Kenya shillings rolled out from banks for household loans. Yeah, John says, this is good to know. Iragu says, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, so more, more and more comments. And then let me just maybe read one more. Yes, Dennis, you're very right. Dennis says, it's because of the current economic situation. Yes, so it's a bit of a combination from elections to COVID to the fuel to there's so many factors. It just shows that there's a great need for debt uh, and uh, loan facilities. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so... Your household may have been part of this, or maybe not. But either way, it just shows that there's a great need and we need to be having these conversations because that's how we can be able to understand how best to maximize these opportunities as and when they come, right? So again, today we're going to be talking about debt management. That's our topic. 
But before we get into that, quick introductions. You already had uh, Peter Dumia. He's the head of non-financial services, Cooperative Bank of Kenya. He's the one who said the prayer. Very great gentleman. My name is Sam Chimera. I have been and will continue to be your facilitator and moderator for these webinars uh, series. I'm a part of uh, um, AMI, which is African Management Institute. And with me in the background, someone who does all the communication, sends you all the, all, the, all, the, all the emails and lets you know what you may have missed and keeps you updated and makes sure you're in the room and all this wonderful work that's happening behind the scenes, Fiona Maina. Uh, she's the marketing project coordinator. She's part of the AMI family as well. So we are super excited to come together as AMI and Corp Bank to put this opportunity and this uh, on this platform. Just to let you know, we have great speakers ahead that are going to be helping us with today's session on debt management. We have Nino Kihagi, she's founder and CEO of Mira Health Coaching. I will be letting you know a little bit more about her later. Great person. And with us also from the Corp Bank family, we have the head of business banking, Mr. Moses Itao himself. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is now in the chat before we 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 continue and hear from Moses, who's going to be just letting us know why uh, why we're here and why this subject is very important. I would like you. I, I already asked you to put your name and your business name, but for now, what I want you to do is type in the chat what is your biggest consideration before taking a loan facility. What's your what's the one thing you really consider that you're like, hmm, I need to, I need to really factor this in. Please put that in the chat. Let's see what we have. I trust that by the time everyone is here, we've all uh used these uh loans, or either you're financing a loan right now, or yeah, either you've just finished or you're thinking about, or you're right in the middle of. Okay. So put that in the chat and I'll see. So, what's your biggest consideration before you get a loan? Aha, uh -huh. Edwin says uh, return on time. When do we need to clear this by? Um, let me see. And I'm going to invite our, our speakers are looking at the chat right now. So I'll be asking them to make their comments. Okay, Noni and Moses will be making their comments a bit later on. Um, so Dennis says he considers market for my products and a proper budget. I like how it said proper. Wycliffe says purpose, Wycliffe says purpose of the loan. Um, let me see. There's so many comments coming in. John says what you indeed, what you intend to do with um John, I may be missing that. What you indeed to what you want, what you intend to do with it, I think that's what you wanted to say. That guy says rate of interest. There's so many comments coming through here. How will I pay it? Purpose of the loan, cost of acquisition, repayment potential. Ability to repay seems to be a big one. Okay, very good, very good. Keep those coming, keep those coming, and we're going to get some responses. Okay, very, very, very good. Now let's do this. Um, so having given all that, let me quickly walk you through what you can expect from today's session. We've done a quick connect, and I want you to keep coming uh, through with that, your name, your business, but also a comment on what is your, your main, main uh, emphasis. What do you look at? Before? What do you consider most? For getting into a loan situation. Okay. We're going to have a panel discussion with Noni Kihagi. I think I may have said it wrong. It's not, you know, it's Noni Kihagi. Sorry about that. And Moses Gitao. Our topic today is debt management. Okay. We'll be answering quite a few questions. As we start the session with our speakers, as soon as you get a question in your mind, I want you to type it in the QA section so that when it comes to the QA uh, after their delivery, after the panel discussion, I can you know, roll out as many questions as possible to our panelists and they can help us with uh, their skill and their expertise in the field. We'll have a QA, and a and then at the end, we'll have a call to action after hearing from Corp Bank on how they can also facilitate our process with like uh, getting debt, getting loan facilities and things like that. Okay, so essentially that's the program for the day and I hope that you're excited about it. Now, let me just invite Moses Kitao, his head business banking, I thought it's always good to start with why are we doing this? So maybe just two, three minutes to introduce himself uh, in a short way, but also to just uh, let us know why is this program such a big emphasis for Corp Bank in terms of helping the entrepreneur? Why is this? Why are we here? Why do we keep coming back every week? Why is this important? And, uh, and, and what can we hope to gain from this whole process? Moses, over to you, sir. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, good morning, uh, my dear morning, customers. Sir. Yeah, now th thank you, Sam, for that. And uh, I, I take this opportunity to really welcome our customers to this session. Uh, this is what we call MSME webinar. It's a training program that we run as a bank just to support our customers on several topics. And uh, recording last week, we had a topic on, um, on accounting and strategies of business, which was uh, effectively delivered by a gentleman called Chris Oliver. And I think Peter also shared uh, on uh, considerations when you are borrowing from cooperative bank. Uh, this commitment uh, from cooperative bank, I, I think is just to say then uh, as, as a department, we've been running this for, for some time. And uh, this year specifically, we have lined up very exciting topics. And uh, today we are discussing debt management, which is very key. And uh, I'll be glad to just understand, to, to also listen from our customers in terms of the feedback. What, 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 what are your experiences in terms of debt management? But uh, more importantly is to say that apart from this, we have several other sessions that we run at the branch level, what we call the business clinics, where we meet together based on the customer needs. We have several other forums that we run, uh, what we call networking sessions in key towns, where we come, have those sessions. I've seen the videos running of those networking sessions that, uh, that were there before. We have what we call uh, exposure trips, international and even locally, where we go and uh, case, uh, showcase where customers who are doing well, businesses that are doing well to each other. And I think that also has helped us has, uh, uh, has helped us in terms of opening up to our, to our customers and also for, for, us, for us as an institution. So our commitment to our customers then is to say that we continue offering this. Uh, today's discussion of debt management is quite insightful. And uh, I think this in terms of debt management, Sam talked of 800 billion borrowed by, 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 by households. But you can imagine also as a country, and I know that debate is, has been there in the, in the recent past. Eh? As a country, we have debt of, of close to eight. Is it eight trillion? I hear about eight trillion, isn't it? So, so I, I think key is to say then that uh, borrowing is, is, some, is necessary, but there are things then that we'll be discussing in the course of, the, of, of, this, uh, of this forum to say then what do you avoid? What do you go for when you are, when you are borrowing? So I take this opportunity again to welcome you. Uh, feel uh, free to participate. Let's get all the feedback so that you can learn from each other. And uh, I would encourage that we share your feedback through the chat, all the things that you'd want to, uh, to understand, or the, anything that you feel that uh, you need to have clarity, let's share it through the, the chat. Thank you and welcome again. Back to you, Sam. Very good. Thank you so much, Moses. Very, very much. So Moses is head business banking, so he's done the welcome note, but we'll be calling him back in the capacity of panelists and I'll be telling you why he why we had to have him and then it was a bit of a debate like well he's already but he has such vast experience in this space we said no no one better to have on this panel so we'll be having him back thank you so much Moses all right so um before we do that let me tell you a little bit about AMI so this is a collaboration between CoBank and AMI I am part of the AMI family I'm super proud to be so AMI is African Management Institute all we do is enable ambitious businesses to thrive. We want to help entrepreneurs across Africa to thrive, to make the most of their businesses, to achieve their goals, to be where they want to be. And if you are an uh, ambitious entrepreneur, then you are our person. We want to help you make the progress that you want to make. We do it through providing tools and training. So having lots of conversations like this, but also providing lots of practical tools that you can apply in your business. We've reached about 39 countries, about over, actually, this number is a bit. Uh, understated about 36,000 plus people trained across Africa through virtual programs and also face-to-face -face programs. There's quite a bit of content. We do many things, but there's one particular thing that we are super excited about uh, sharing with you today, okay? And it's called our GYB pop-ups. It's a, so that we have a, a program called GYB, which is Grow Your Business. Again, helping entrepreneurs grow. And uh, close to you now, we are inviting you to visit our, what we call a pop-up. It's going to be two particular days, tomorrow, which is Friday 23rd, until Sunday 25th. We're going to be at the Zarit Center, Westlands, Nairobi. And uh, that's, of course, located, we're going to be located just outside the Vivo Activewear store, okay, in the new wing. Now, what we try to do with this program is, again, help ambitious entrepreneurs to prosper, to thrive, to get out of the bottlenecks they're in, to be in a better place. The beautiful thing about this that you might find interesting is that we are offering a full scholarship. 
So we are offering entrepreneurs who are interested and passionate about moving forward. We're offering them full scholarship to this particular program. So you can apply on African management, uh, africanmanagers.org slash GYB. In fact, what we're going to do is share a link in the chat right now. Let me see if we can do that. Yeah, well, let's do that. Yes, thank you so much, Fiona. So there's a link in the chat. It's a fully uh, sponsored program. Um, so I'm just going to give you a minute or two to respond to that. You can just click on the chat. What I want to make sure is that, yes, Edwin says, wow, amazing. So what I want to do is click on the chat. Um, before we move to the next thing, I want to make sure that all of you have got the, the link and that you have access to this great opportunity. Okay. So use the link and then you can consider further whether you want to apply or not. But until then, at least you have the option, you have the link. We're also going to be having this pop-up tomorrow till Sunday. We'll be at the Sarit Center. That's Westlands Nairobi. So again, if you're looking for information, at least get the link so you can look at it later. Now, if you've got the link, type yes in the chat. That will let me know that we are moving very quickly so we can move. If you see someone is using their emojis with the hearts and so on. Yes, type yes. Uh, good. Okay. So quite a number of people have gotten the, uh, the link. And perhaps we'll bring it back at the end, but that's something that we're doing, okay? If you're passionate about your business and you see how we can help you, yes. Uh, Judy is yet to get feedback. You will be getting a response for your application, but it's good to know that some people have already applied. Okay, very good. So that's about AMI and that's what we do. I'm super excited to partner with you. Now, I want to, without further ado, introduce our speakers for today. So we have Noni. Um, maybe let me start with Moses, because Moses, you already had, I was already telling you that Moses has already spoken is in such a huge capacity in the bank, but we said, no, Moses, we need you back for this particular session, especially about debt management. Just to let you know a bit about our speakers. So Moses has about 25 plus years of banking experience. So he's been like a banker for such a long time. He's worked, he's been in branch operations. We're talking about debt. He's worked as a credit officer, relationship officer, a branch of a manager. He's been the head of microfinance and so many more roles. And he's risen up the ranks up to the position now he holds as head business banking. So there's no one better to tell us about this sub particular subject than Moses Kitao. So Moses is going to be up. Moses, if you could switch your, your video on as I introduce Noni. So Noni Kihagi is a very enterprising lady. And uh, I, what I find interesting about her story is that she started her career as an investment advisor. She's really passionate about helping people to take charge of their financial wealth. And whether young, whether old, she's interested as a, she helps them as a trainer, as a coach, as a facilitator. No need, there are so many things you do. She also started a, a business, a company called Mira Wealth Coaching. She'll be telling us a bit about that. And, and what she helps them to do, I know generally, what she helps people to do is how to use what you have to live out your life's goal and purpose. So I'm going to ask her, what does that exactly mean and how can we benefit from that? They offer lots of courses, especially to the point of today. There's one particular course, a mini course about debt free living. We will be getting into that as well. But right now, let me ask uh, Noni if you could come onto video and uh, just uh, say a quick hello. There you are. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Hi, everyone. Thank you to AMI and COP for having me um, to be part of this. I'm grateful for that. So just I think Sam, you've already introduced me very well. Um, personal finance is my passion project. So this is something I'm very passionate about. And I'm very, um, I think it's very important that we learn how to use the tools and just the knowledge that's available in regards to our personal finances to make decisions that will actually help us achieve what um, we are looking to achieve in life. So just a summary so that I don't take too much time. But before before you, let me let me ask, so Mira Wealth Coaching, why Mira? What, please help us understand what, why that name why Mira Wealth? So I'll try and give the abbreviated version. Yeah, so yeah. as I, <laughs> I started my journey um, in investment advisory, and what happened is when I left <laughs> investment advisory to do the very millennial thing of, is this what I want to do with my life? <laughs> um, <laughs> I 
ended up making some very many um, horrible financial decisions and I lost a lot. <laughs> and so it surprised me that um, with all the knowledge that I had, <laughs> I still fell prey to the, uh, I, don't, I don't know what, I'm trying to look for a polite term, it's, but I still <laughs> fell prey to various cons here and there. And <laughs> I saw my life savings just dwindle away very, very quickly. So Mirror Wealth was actually first for me. It was going back to, okay, what are the principles? And I also do have a Christian background. So here the mirror was the Bible and saying, okay, what exactly is there ah. to said about um, wealth and just seeing the very many mistakes <laughs> I made. Um, and so it was first um, my own journey, my own wealth journey um, yeah. and recovering what I had lost and then realizing that I represent so many people. And so yeah, I yeah. said, me with my knowledge made these mistakes. Now, what about people who are not in the finance industry? Right. Um, mistakes are they making so that's where mirror wealth um comes um so it is a yeah. it is a passion project if, yeah if, yeah if, yeah very good it's uh, let me let you know it's very good to be at the beginning of a discussion and then the person who is the investment advisor tells you that i have made mistakes the rest of yeah. us feel ah we can breathe out <laughs> and really listen because sometimes we look at people like you and like imagine she has it all together but the fact that you're here to share lessons learned and that you feel everyone's pain and you want to help us move forward. So that's really good. Thank you so much, Noni, for accepting our invitation. Thank you for having Mo me. Moses? Yes, yes, Sam. You have such a grand, uh, especially I see that there's lots of aspects of credit facilities, there's lots of things that help the entrepreneur. What makes it so important to you? Sorry, Sam, I lost you in the beginning. Maybe you could uh, go back. Okay. No, I just wanted to find out, uh, having had all these years of experience, especially with the banking side, working with M uh, SMEs and helping them move forward, what, what makes you so passionate about working with SMEs? Thank you. Thank you, Sam. May I say that, uh, and, and uh, good morning, Noni. Good to see you. Th thank you. Mine is to say that uh, uh, just as you introduced, I've been uh, in financial institutions for some time, yeah. and specifically in the lending roles. And uh, may I say it's a calling. It's a ah. calling to, to, to empower the, 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 the business people. And I think that is a living, that is a calling that I've lived for for some time. I've done it at the credit office, as, as a credit officer in, in the branch. Uh, collecting information for the customers, putting the documentation together. And these are customers, these are businesses that are not structured. This is mm -hmm. what we call the micro enterprises, a business, a mom and boga, uh, yeah. those kind of businesses, the, the, the ones that are not structured. I've gone up to the radars uh, doing uh, the structured one, the small enterprises that have a bit of, uh, a bit of structures, have a bit of records. I think that has been key. But, but mm -hmm. more importantly is the support on the financial side to just ensure that, that the customer now gets to benefit on whatever services that they get. It's not only, it's not only that, because uh, as, a, as, 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 a, as a prudent lender, it's not only giving the, uh, lending to the customer, the issue of, of, of passing that on and off of the debt, but of course, the, the other aspect of the finance, non-financial services, that, 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 that what you are doing now. And I think that a very, a very key thing that uh, most of the financial institutions is in, in investing, the investment that we have done at the bank level is that every other credit officer in the branch has the ability to construct records based on what they hear from the customer. Because yeah. for all, all, all of our time, I've had most of our customers have information somewhere in the head. They may not be written. So they, they will purchase, but uh, they, they, perhaps they don't record anything. But through interviewing, mm -hmm. through that mm -hmm. conversation between, between the bank and the, 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 the credit officer and the customer, they're able yeah. to put records that will help us in terms of making a decision of whether to support or, or not to support. Yeah. I think the other key thing in the course of that is now understanding where the money goes. And that okay. is very key now for, for the business customer to say, my money is going to this project, and this is the return I expect such that then you do not only work for the bank, but you work for the business for, for, for improvement and growth of the business, the business that the customer yeah. is putting. Very good, very good. As Moses, you, I see you're already jumping ahead of me. 
because I was, I was going to ask you, what do you consider before getting into debt? And I like that you've highlighted, where is the money going? You don't just get money for the sake of, where is the money going? Okay. But let me come back to Noni briefly. So Noni, here's the challenge. We have always been taught debt is bad. Debt is bad. Don't get debt. So some of us, as soon as you said debt, we run. We run, we flee, we, I don't know what, from Bible terms to normal terms, we run, we flee, we, we hide. What is the, like, what's the, what's your overview on debt management? I see that also it's important, but, you know, can it be good? What makes debt good or bad? What, from your experience, especially from a facilitator, trainer, and coach in this field? Okay, so you tend to find that debt is usually categorized into good debt and bad debt. So I think just to come from the top of it, bad debt is debt that is taken for consumption. So I'll give you an example. You've qualified for a credit card and you use your credit card to go on holiday. <laughs> you use your credit card to go and buy um, coffee and to go buy clothes and all that. So when you're looking at debt for consumption basis, that is automatically considered bad debt. Now, when it comes to good debt, good debt is very tricky. And I want to also, I'll also just echo what Moses said in regards to what is the purpose for this debt you're getting into. Yeah. And the reason why I say good debt is tricky is we usually just say, we wrap it up in a bow and we say good debt is debt that is taken to buy assets. So when uh -huh. you're looking at building your wealth, you usually want to grow your asset base. And here, when you're looking at assets, these are things that you own. Yeah. So we want to go to the um, accounting <laughs> definition of assets, but just the basic personal finance um, definition of assets are things that you own. And ideally, you're buying these things that you own. You're hoping they will do two things, that they will either increase um, in value over time or that they will be able to earn you an income, right? Now, why I say good debt is tricky is sometimes we, when we're getting that debt where you say, okay, this is the business I'm entering into. And so to, for me to carry out my business, I need to buy one, two, three, four, five, which will need to be financed by debt. Sometimes we end up making mm. good, getting into good debt emotionally and not financially. For you to get into okay, debt. Okay, okay, well, first wait, first wait, first wait. Okay, take one. And that feels like there's a trap there. So it's good debt, but made on a wrong emotional basis? Yes, or on a, not a financial basis. So I'll give you an example. Let us say you need to buy a vehicle for your business, right? Mm -hmm. So good debt will say, ah, it's for an asset that is going to yes. help your business. Very yes. good. What yes. good debt will not tell you is, have you made a financial decision before you acquire the loan to get that debt? And by financial uh, decision, I mean, have you sat down and have you done the math? <laughs> have you okay, actually okay. said, what does it cost me to actually get this car? What is the actual cost of the loan? Can I afford the loan? Mm. Mm -hmm. So that is always my disclaimer with good debt, even in as much as on the average, it would look like it's, it's debt for my business. It's debt that's going to help my business. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But can you actually financially afford to get into that debt? And why I say it's emotional sometimes, it's because sometimes we make decisions for this is what my business needs or this is what I need as an individual. I need to yeah. go get a loan. So yes. based on that, you go get the loan. But have yeah. you done the actual math <laughs> to actually say, this is a debt I can actually afford. I can afford to pay it back. Pay and this debt. is the income I expect I am going to make from this particular asset. Okay. So if okay. you have done the math and the math balances, then that would be considered a good debt. If the math is not balancing and you go ahead and you make it, it was not a very good, good debt decision. <laughs> okay. So, so what I hear from you, there's the it's not enough to just have a good intention. You need to do the math. Like uh, I've had yes. recently, someone said, the math needs to math. <laughs> yes, if the math is not mathing, please do not get into it. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Noni. Now, let me come back to Moses. Moses, as soon as we started, we asked people, 
what do you consider before getting into debt? And some of the comments that we had, I'm just jumping back to some of the comments that we had were, can I pay? I'm just scrolling up to see, can I pay the loan? What is the interest? How long will it take me? Uh, and so many other questions like that. What do you what do you tend to see as the, the the considerations that people make before getting into this perceived good date, as uh, Noni was telling us? Oh, sorry, I know uh, Moses. I think you're on mute. Yes, there you go. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sam. I, I think uh, just before I go to the considerations, I, I want to raise three factors that uh, maybe then uh, into why why that would be good or bad, and. Uh, yeah. I think uh, just to say that uh, utilizing and controlling, controlling your debt effectively, I think is a very key factor to either personal development of the business. Mm -hmm. I, I want to repeat that. Eh? <laughs> utilizing and controlling <laughs> debt <laughs> effectively is a key factor to, to either the past personal or, or business development. The second Moses, thing I, that, yeah? Moses, I think that the, the, I think the trick that we find is when you know how you said effectively yes <laughs> i think we may struggle to to get what you know effectively may be subjective I'll, i will i will i will exp I'll, I'll expound it as i as i go on the second okay. thing that uh, is to say that is beneficial when managed well and i think that is the effectiveness that, that i'm talking of mm, okay. that is is uh, is beneficial when managed well and it's not only to, to business, even at personal level. And uh, I like what Noni said earlier. The, the third thing is to say that uh, debt can sink the business when neglected or mismanaged. Right, right. And, and I think we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it. Uh, several companies that uh, that have uh, been top and, yeah. and closing up because of of issues of debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so those those will be the things that I wanted to pass on. Then in terms of consideration, then uh, Sam, yes. and I like, I like what is coming through the chats, a very good uh, information there. But again, I would want to say, to talk about four or five, four, five items that uh, to, to consider. Because number one, and I think for every borrower, is availability. Is that data, is it available? You may, I may have the needs, but is the debt available? And then the second okay. factor, the second factor which I've seen coming through is the issue of cost. What is the cost of that debt? Not only the interest, but also there are some other, other costs. As I go, uh, would I go to, uh, to, 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 to consider a debt that uh, is maybe going for, for 30% while my return is, is 20%. What is the cost of that debt as, as compared to the return that I'm expected to make as a business if I was, I was to borrow? What is the return then? That will be my third my item. My, okay. my, my, fourth, my fourth item will be the issue of the, my ability to repay. Okay. As, 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 a, as a borrower, do I have the ability to, to return that money within the time that is stipulated? I, I think those then will be my, the, the key factors. And of course, there is a purpose. And purpose now drives what, what Inoni was saying. Do I borrow for, for, consum for personal consumption? Or do I borrow for investment in a business? So in summary, then it's availability, it's purpose, it's the cost, it's uh, ability, and also the return. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Noni, allow me to ask you the same question. Now you do, I know you do a lot of investment coaching, and you shared that you made many mistakes as you were starting. We trust by now you're making better decisions. What are you considering now before making, before going getting into a, a, an investment where your money, you know, just things as you watch. What, what do you consider now as a better investor? Yes, I have learned. Um, my lessons are good for other people. I think yeah. the number one, this, the one, and I think I will keep on perhaps echoing it, is not making my decisions emotionally. And here when I talk about emotional decisions, I, there are two particular um, emotions mm -hmm. I, I usually am very careful about. One is mm -hmm. fear. And the other uh, one is greed. There is something about when you are fearful um, about the financial decision you're about to make or about your financial situation that brings desperation, that makes you just run and get a, a financial solution that may not actually be good for you in the long run. Mm -hmm. 
So that is one of the things you have to be very careful about. That even as the current economic situation is, you know, inflation 8.53%, we look at the price of fuel. And if you're yeah. running a business, these are things that directly have an impact on you. So it's very um, easy to get into financial debt that may not be good for you, yeah? Because mm -hmm. you're trying to solve a short-term solution, but you're using a very long-term um, mm. you're trying to solve a short-term problem with a long-term long -term solution. solution right? So we have to be very careful. I have to, I'm usually very careful about that. The other thing is greed. There is something about, we want to get the, we want to sort our financial situation now. We want to make those um, investment returns or business returns a hundredfold, two hundredfold. Um, 352 you fold. Know, you know, and this is not someone, if just even in vulnerability, even me, I've done pyramid schemes. Yeah, oh, knowingly. yes. <laughs> Mine was knowingly, you know, but grief still got the better of me. And so yeah. what you end up doing is now, again, you start making financial decisions based on that. Right. So, so if someone tells you, um, and I'll give an example, let's even, the example that is very commonly used in Kenya, quail farming, there was the time for the quail eggs. And yes. everyone said, if you get into the quail business, let me tell you, you've you made it. Money. You will become midnight millionaire, right? So what Hold happens? Some, some people ended up getting into debt to go and start up a business that they had no understanding about, but they were sold on the return. So you have to be very, very careful about that. What is driving you to get that particular, um, be careful of those two um, emotions. The third thing is, and even when um, I've touched on it here in my referral to the quail business is, do you actually have an understanding of the business that you're getting debt to go and create because if you do not understand the business itself you will end up getting um whether it's investors money or whether it is debt money the bank's money the circle's money it doesn't matter you will end mm -hmm. up getting all that money throwing it into a business that you didn't understand the business the business collapses but you're still left with a liability to pay yes so, oh yes that as an individual, I look at is do I understand what I am getting the money to invest in? If I do not understand, and I don't say that if you don't understand, don't get the money and don't invest, take time to learn. Right. So then when you're making, when I am making my decision is from a point of understanding and from a point of knowledge. And then where fear and mm. greed are the uh, motivating factors. Motions. Yes. Take a moment pause. to pause and actually make it a financial decision. So those are the three things that I actually um, okay. look at as an individual and that I also tell people to also um, look at. Okay, very good. So, okay, so the, we are about halfway or a bit over the halfway line. We've talked about wisdom in terms of getting into debt before you get now. Uh, talk to me. I am an investor. I am a businessman. I am an entrepreneur who has made all the decisions that you people have told us not to make. <laughs> I made the decision out of fear, out of greed. Moses, I forgot to consider the priorities that you told me to make. And now I'm in debt. Talk to me. How do I get out of debt? Moses, what's your comment? And then Noni. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Getting out of debt. I think there are several options, especially when you are in a formal, formal, formal setup, uh, and uh, that is um, the financial setup. Eh? Okay. And uh, one of the things that uh, I would encourage, especially the, the, our customers, is keeping close to the person who runs to you, be it the digital ah. manager, keeping close to your bank, because uh, uh, I'll tell you, and uh, banks have provision. And when you hear central bank talking of uh, a rose rate or something like that, eh, there is provision for to say that uh, once you rent, even when you rent your, your own money, there's always provision to say anything can go bad. And in case it goes yeah. bad, it's not keeping away. It's just ensuring that you keep a close contact with your relationship, relationship manager with your bank and tell them I'm, I'm undergoing some financial challenges. 
So okay. I think there are, there are several things that that then that then help help us when you have uh, you are you discuss that you are undergoing financial challenges. Is number one to say yeah. one of the things is to match your current income with their own repayment. Just an example to say, assuming you had a own facility that you, that you are paying an instalment of twenty thousand on monthly basis, and your current income now goes to, 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 to you, you have been you have been able to meet the twenty thousand all through, and then yeah. after some time, then your 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 you you income goes down and you are able to only get ten thousand. It's important there to tell the bank or you the, the the person renting to you, can can you help me in terms of structuring this debt to meet my current income. And that is what we now call restructuring of the debt. That can only happen if you are if you're able to now uh, discuss and communicate with your relationship manager or with your bank. Okay. I, 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 and I think that Very is now what what we call a debt restructure. The second thing, okay. uh, the second thing which is very key, sometimes uh, is, uh, we call it recapitalizing the, recapitalizing the business, and recapitalizing does not only have to come from debt. So it's issue of maybe disposing of an asset. And I think that comes on to say, I'm, I'm, I'm in debt, I have an asset that may not be making money for me. Do I dispose of this asset to ensure that I pay? I repay the debt before, before it, beca it becomes ex expensive. The second, th the third thing, which is more or less equivalent to the, to the, to the, to the restructure, is change of payment dates. Because some, some dates, uh, if you, if you, uh, for example, if you are borrowing from a, debt from a bank and you do agree with the bank that I'll be paying on fees, and your income yeah. does not come on fifth. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's important to say then my income comes on 10th, comes on 20th. Can you move my payment date from fifth to, to 20th, to 20th of, or, or to 10th? That helps you now okay. give you a breather in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of, uh, of, 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 of of the repayment. The other okay. thing that uh, the other thing that is very key, and I think this this helps us in terms of uh, in terms of uh, th that knowledge of the bank. Sometimes you can get out of debt by getting more debt. You can get out yes. of debt by acquiring more, more, debt. more debt. And that is what we call financing or topping up. You have a, 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 you have a challenge, a, a cash flow crunch that can only be sorted by additional, additional funding. So that is what in the, in the, in the banking language we call refinancing or topping up. To say, okay. uh, if I pay my, if I pay you a million today and get an additional million, then I can, I can be able to restart my business. I can be able to refinance my project. That kind yeah. of, that kind of, that kind of thinking. But more importantly, when it comes to bank, to banking, is issue of ensuring that all your incomes now get into, into the bank. Because once you, once you, you, you once you, 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 you do sales and uh, divert them from the, from the bank account, it you have a problem in terms of now getting to the repayment. So the issue of ensuring that all your sales get into the bank account helps you in terms of now getting out of that debt so that you, are time, you have a timely repayment. And most debts would have a penalty in terms of lateness. So as you also sign the letter of offer, be clear on what you are charged in terms of, of rate repayment as a, as, as a customer so that that would help you avoid to being, being late and also <coughs> a recollection. And finally, some is the issue of yes. debt correction. And uh, this also, uh, pass I'm addressing the traders, people who do trading, uh, you've borrowed from the bank and you do your services or you produce your goods and you extend those goods to, in credit to your customers, a period beyond what the bank has given you. So okay. I, I think timely correction of your debts out there as a, as a, as a business will also be very practical to ensure that uh, you, 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 have, you have cash all the time. And Very last, thing, last thing is to say, getting out of, of, of debt <laughs> by some uh, is, is cash. And cash, cash is king in, every, in any business that we do. So ensure you collect cash because a business could be profitable, but, uh, yes. but it, cash has is no, it has no cash flows. Okay. I think that we need liquidity. Okay. Yes, you need liquidity. As you, as you can tell, you can tell why we had to have Moses on this panel. He's very passionate, very informed, and he's providing all the answers we need today. Thank you so much, Moses. So Moses, on this particular question, getting out of debt, we're talking about getting out of debt. So Moses has touched, especially, I feel, on the business side. Noni, I know you work with individuals, you work with organizations. I want to point you towards personal debt. Because so there's business debt and then there's personal debt. What's your experience there and how, if I've made a series of bad decisions, pyramid schemes and all these things, <laughs> how do I get out of debt? Because there are people like me here. 
Okay. So this is what I'll say. I want to echo what Moses said, and that is having a relationship with your bank or with your debt provider. And this is what I mean. Um, if you are in trouble from a debt perspective and you owe the bank money, don't run away from the bank. Go to the bank and be very, very honest with them. And the reason why I say this is I previously I used to work at a bank. <laughs> and uh. what I know for a fact is the bank would rather you take longer to pay off the debt then you default the debt. And so this is now where even what Moses was speaking about in terms of debt restructuring and amending dates, these are things you want to go and have a conversation with about with um, the bank. So please, that is the first thing I would say. If you find you are in over your head, please go and have a conversation with your bank and with your debt provider. The second thing I would say is be aware of the actual numbers of your debt. And this is what I mean. You can say, I have, my debt is 10 million, for instance, right? But what is that, what is that, break down that figure? So let's say, for example, from a personal perspective, maybe it was for an investment in investment A, investment B, and a mortgage, for instance. Break it down. Investment A, this is the loan amount. This is the amount of interest that is on this loan. And this is the amount I pay on a monthly basis. Break that down for each debt that you actually have. And the reason for this is when you're able to break it down in that way so that, and please even include money you owe the shopkeeper or that credit, what you owe the Ascari for cleaning something, all of yeah. that, break it all down. You, you know what you owe your family members who changed for you here and there. Yeah, those those ones can money. wait, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but no, I, I'm have, joking. Please don't make them wait. Sorry, go on. No, but just have a good overview of what you actually owe. And the reason for this is sometimes it is easier to pay off debt one by one by one than trying to beat the whole chunk, you know, so that when you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm starting my debt journey. So you can, there are two ways you can do about, you can go about this. There's what is known as the debt snowball and what is known as the debt avalanche. So you choose the one that is um, applicable for you. So with the debt snowball, what you pretty much do is you list your debt from the smallest amount to the largest amount. And what you do is you pay the minimums that are due for each debt, but you focus on paying off the smallest one first. So any extra money you get, you're throwing it towards that small debt. So what you're doing is you start kicking, taking off the debt you owe one by one by one. And mm. this one has a psychological impact to it because you know, if you have yes. 10 debts and you take off one, it gives you, a, we can do this, yeah, right? 10% 10, 10 of my debt has been cleared. Yeah, you know, so that's um, one way to go. And then what you find is that now the debt you are, the amount you are um, using to finance the small debt, you now add it to the other one, you know? So you end up accumulating even the amount you can pay off towards the other debt, and then you take it off like that. So that's what is known yeah. as the debt snowball. The debt avalanche, you go at, you look at it from what is the most expensive debt I have to the least expensive debt I have, and you start, start to tick it off based on most expensive. So that if you have a debt that is a loan that is like 18% and one that is 12%, you will start with the 18% one. Okay. So this one makes more sense for people who are more financially inclined, who just want to see um, the cost, overall cost of their um, debt going down. So those are the two main ways. But the other thing that I would also like to pick up that even Moses said is sometimes what you can do is you can look at it and if, especially if you have a good relationship with your bank, you can see how can I consolidate this debt that I have, yeah? Mm. When you speak to your bank, so you total it up, you look at the cost, then you go also look at your bank, speak to your bank and you say, okay, so let's say my total debt is 1 million shillings. And then I do the calculation and I see the total, the average interest rate I'm paying on all these, my many small debts is maybe 18%. I can go to the bank 
and I can say if you qualify. <laughs> Yeah, for, if um, you qualify. If you qualify for the loan of one million, and maybe the cost that you will be paying with the bank is maybe 15%. Mm -hmm. Why not take the facility with the bank, use that money to pay off all this other debt so that now your focus is this one um, overall cheaper loan that you will have with the bank. But then also... Mm -hmm know that the purpose of this loan that you got with the bank was to clear off your debt. So don't know you look at it and say, mm -hmm, I have got an extra a million <laughs> shillings here. <laughs> Let me do Emotional what I decision. To do with it. Emotional yeah. decision and we are back to step one. Yeah, and this is now also what I will say. And the quicker you pay off your debt, the cheaper it is. So when you have that extra lump sum of money, go and do what is called a capital reduction with your bank and try as much as possible to clear off your loan, right? And obviously this will be applicable for some, but not for all individuals, okay. but that is something that you also need to be cognizant of. The longer your loan tenor, the more, cash expensive it actually is so let us also be very cognizant of that and also be cognizant of the fact that the loan um the fix the interest rates are not um uh, fixed they are variable so you also yeah. want to look at how the economic situation is going what direction the interest rates seem to be going and make a decision also based on that if the interest rate increases from next just randomly from like 10 percent to 12 percent are yeah. you still able to finance that loan? So those are the things you want to consider. Yeah. Very good. I, I would like us to stay having this very long and very fruitful discussion, but unfortunately we may not be able to. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to turn it over to, I know there's quite a number of questions that are also already being answered by our team behind the scenes. What I wanted to come, now this one is going to be like quick fire. Okay. Uh, Moses, a quick answer for this one, if you can. Would you advise me to bring my land title, my title deed, to get a loan to grow my business? Moses, what would you say? Someone yes. is asking in the in the in the QA. Same thank you. It's advisable, but uh, in, in renting, we say we don't rent to collateral, we rent to cash flows. So if the cash flows are not uh, okay, then uh, that title would not help. So we rent to collateral. We, we rent to, to cash flows, not to collateral. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the short and quick answer. Noni, what's your comment? <laughs> I think I will just echo what Moses said. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. I just wondered, you know, like, <laughs> Moses is in the bank. We are like, when Moses fails, we come to Noni. This is, this is what can... I would also say is, um, why would you, what, it's, it seems very tricky. Make a financial okay. decision there. That is my take. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm guessing yours would be to double check, is this an emotional decision that you're making? Are you making it out of fear, out of greed, because now you're putting your land at risk? There's a lot of risk there that we need to talk about. And I think to re-echo what Moses says, have a good relationship with your banker so that you can talk through, because you may be making a bad decision that they can help you with, right? Okay, so let me move to my maybe last question, because we need to move to something else. What would you advise someone who has been uh, listed and wants to start afresh? Someone asked that question. I want to just check if you can understand that, Moses. Does that make sense to you, the question? Just come back again. Uh, someone, has been someone has been listed and wants to start afresh. Uh -huh. listing, is not, listing is not necessarily bad. And uh, listing, I guess it's listing in CLB. Listing is not necessarily bad uh, because uh, it, it shows these days we have positive and negative listing. And uh, ah. it's issues of what we said earlier, the, 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 the cause of the default is what you need to tell to, 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 to tell your relationship manager is what you need to share with the bank because you'll be listed because of several issues. Number one, default will be part of, uh, to, uh, basically you'll be listed because of default, but that default could be caused by several things. Say the business was down, uh, we have the advent of COVID-19, which caused a number of us to, to, have, to, to go into default. So, so okay. those, that explanation out to the bank is very important and uh, do not fear to face, I think my direct answer to that, to that person is do not, fear, do not fear to face your banker because of listing. Banks okay. have a mechanism of helping you get out of the listing 
and uh, also we do accommodate people who are listed as far as there is a genuine reason to the listing that can be able to we can be able to verify and be able okay. to support that customer okay very good so i find that a lot of it comes back to have a good relationship with the person who is lending you then they can understand they can give you the help that you need it's difficult when you just have a one line question and hope for a whole book of an answer so let's have conversations with our bankers okay so we've come to the end of this particular session Noni, I'm going to ask you, what's what's your top two tips to entrepreneurs? And, and I like that from your coaching, I've been to your website, you, you deal with personal financing and also business financing. What are your top two tips to people regarding this uh, subject of debt management? Top two tips and then Moses, top two tips, and then we'll turn it over to the next step. Um, so my first one, I think I have been repeating it over and over. When, make your debt decision a financial decision. So if the, if it makes sense financially, you've done your background, everything works, then you can go ahead and get it. The second one is only get a loan for what you actually need, not necessarily for what you qualify for, not necessarily for what you're approved for, but what you actually need. Do not get unnecessary debt um, just because you can. So those would be my top two tips. Very good. Thank you so much. Moses? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I think my key thing is debt mismatch. And uh, I would want to explain it this way. When you are borrowing for a, for a business or even for a personal need, there, there are basically two needs. One is uh, investment capital. And number two is uh, working capital. By working capital, I mean that the day-to-day -day needs in terms of operations for the business. That is a stocking. If you're in, 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 a, in a trading business, you need stocks, you need uh, to pay salaries, that kind of what you call, that's what you call working capital. The second need is normally investment capital. You need to buy land, you need to buy a building, you need to buy some machinery for the business. So mm -hmm. most of the things that I see my business, business customers doing is mismatch when you borrow uh, working capital is normally short term because you buy stock today sell tomorrow uh, investment capital is long term because you buy a land today or you buy a house today the the return is is will basically take will basically take some time so the mismatch mm -hmm. that i'm talking of is when you now take uh, investment capital and do it as working capital or vice versa take working capital and do it as as investment yes. capital what it means yes. is that if you borrow for working capital and you go to buy a house your business will struggle in the immediate in, 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 uh, immediately to start struggling because you have drawn that capital from that money from the business to put it in a in, a, in an asset that will take time to, to to do a return so mismatch of debt i think is critical it is something that uh, as, as as borrowers we need to, to to really understand when we when we are borrowing okay very good thank you so much so again, I want to say thank you to our, our speakers today. Thank you, Noni. Um, Noni does so much in terms of uh, helping people with their finances and establish where they are on their way to where they want to be. We're going to put a link in the chat right now and, and just advise you to, you can, it's definitely quite a resource. So there's a link in the chat. I'm just going to give a few seconds for that to be in the chat. Um, Fiona, if you could kindly help me with that. It will be coming up shortly. And so that you can know where to access her resources, there's some free resources, there's some blogs that she writes, but also on her website, there's courses that you can take. There you go. So the link is on the chat. Noni, thank you so much for the work that you do. And thank you for responding to our invitation today. Thank you. And, and Moses as well. Thank you so much. So we're going to continue. We're going to continue with uh, Moses. Let me get back to sharing my screen. We've, we've come to the end of our this particular bit of our session. Now, what I want us to do is, um, so we've had Q&A. Oh, sorry, I'm, I should take a step back. If you feel like your question has not been answered, so I mentioned already there's a team of people that have been answering the questions in the chat and also in the Q&A. So your answer, especially if it's very specific to COPE, it has probably been answered by one of the people who are behind the scenes responding in the chat and in the Q&A. Right. So Moses here talked about um, an area that's very critical in terms of you need to know what loan facility you need. So what we're going to do right now is going to, to launch a poll and just check with you on how well you know your loan facilities. OK. And, and uh, when it comes to the match. OK. So let me see where we are. OK. So I'm going to ask the first question. So three quick quizzes. There's a lot, there's a poll on your screen. The first one is a COP quiz. Let's call it a COP quiz. 
So if you're looking for funds to expand or restock your business, which loan would you take? Give me your response. Okay. What I'm going to do is time this maybe like about a minute so that it's really quick. Okay. Let's see. So this is a quiz to check how well you know your responses here. If you're looking for funds to expand or restock your business, which loan would you take? And after each poll, don't worry, I'll give you the right answer. And then uh, we'll ask Moses to come back and talk us through some of those other aspects. Okay. So we're about 50% response. Okay. So a number of us are saying mortgage, others are saying asset financing. There are three quick quizzes, so I need to move to the next one. So if you haven't responded, you have five seconds. And we'll just keep it at a minute each. Okay, good. So I'm ending the poll. The response is 92% of us said working capital. Okay, if you said working capital, you are right. So congratulations. You got that answer very correct. Okay, now let me ask uh, a second question. Let me ask a second question to just check your core knowledge. If you're looking for funds to clear an urgent but short-term business need, which loan would you go for? Is it term loan? Is it overdraft? Is it e-credit? Is it asset financing? Okay. And I think this is a very good way of checking your knowledge of the bank. Yes. So it's good to have a good relationship with your lender. In this case, Coop Bank is one of those. Okay. Again, the question is, if you're looking for funds to clear an urgent but short-term business need, which loan would you take? You can, there are multiple answers. You can pick one or two options. Okay. Just about 10 more seconds. And after this, I'm going to turn it over to Moses to just speak a little bit about uh, what there is in terms of uh, from the side of COP. So about 50% of us have responded. I'm going to... You have about five seconds. So let's see. If you said, um, it's going to go ahead and end the poll here because it's been one minute. Let me show you the results. So according to the results, most of us said, um, some of us said term loan, some of us said overdraft, others e-credit, others asset financing. The right answer is B, is the second and the third answer is overdraft and e-credit. And I see that most of us knew that some of us did not some of us are inclined to a term loan but that's not the right response so you may be applying for something that's different the third one and the last one here this is really quick so just single answer if you're looking for funds to purchase a movable asset for your business which loan would you take okay which loan would you take let's see let's see which loan you're looking to purchase some movable assets for your business Okay, would you go for overdraft? I see some people are saying overdraft. Others are saying mobile loan. Others mortgage. Um, just about 30 seconds. Very good. Okay. Uh, I think about 10 more seconds. Seconds about uh, let's maybe because of time, I'm just going to go ahead and end there because we're about 60% response rate. Okay, good. So, there some of us said overdraft, and others mobile loan. Those answers would be incorrect. If you're looking for funds to purchase a movable asset for your business, the loan that you need to be applying for is asset financing. So, if you got all three correct. Congratulations, you do know quite a bit about your bank and that's very good. If you got any of them wrong, then it's an opportunity to engage with your banker so you can find out how else they can help you. Now, we were going to walk through the difference between good and bad loans, but I think in the conversation, we covered quite a bit of ground with that, thanks to our speakers. Um, so right now, I want to just turn it over briefly to Moses to just walk us through some of the solutions that Cop Bank can provide. Uh, Moses, over to you if we can do it in five minutes and then we take specific questions for COP so that we can end time. Is that all right, Moses? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Maybe we could go to the next. Uh, and uh, it's basically to say uh, a business customer, and uh, this is how we have structured our solutions, has three basic needs. The first need is transactional needs. And for transaction is uh, you, are, you, you, are, you are in business, you are buying and selling. You need to it, uh, 
we have solutions that help you facilitate the buying and selling and even the, the collections. Basically, we have what we call the packages, an MSME package is packaged into a gold, a silver, a bronze, or a, a gold, silver, or bronze. And bronze is uh, when you are starting up, uh, it's a startup business, somebody who is just, uh, uh, they are selling below, below, below uh, 1 million shillings uh, in terms of uh, the, the, monthly, the, the monthly turnovers. Silver package is somebody who has a bit of structure. You have been there in business for some time and selling up to 10 million shillings uh, as, as a business on, 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 on annual basis. Then uh, we have a good package where we have a customer who is doing up to uh, about 50 million on, uh, on, on monthly basis, which is uh, uh, up to 500,000 on, uh, on, uh, on, on yearly basis. So those packages come with several, so several, several solutions. I, I, I think I'll be speaking to that. Then the second need that, uh, that as a customer you require, then will be in terms of payment or and corrections. Because once you sell, once you buy, you need to pay your supplier. Once you, you sell, you need to collect from your, from, from, from your buyers. So we have what we call payment and, and collection solutions. So those payment and collection solutions come with the packages. So we have what we call them cop cash on phone. We have cop till. We have what we call them collection. We have cop online. We have COP Kwajirani, an agent near you, that is a bank next to, to your business out there in the estates in the, in the village. We have the POS machines. We also have Lipa and Mpesa, where we help you terminate any funds that you pick from, uh, you, you collect from Mpesa into, 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 your, into, into the business, the, 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 what you call the package account or the transaction account. And it gets back now into the cycle of, uh, of the trading of the business. And then lastly, we have e-commerce, that helps you that helps facilitate the buying and uh, the buying and selling in a marketplace. Lastly, I think uh, as, as a need is what we have been discussing, and I think you've talked for, on this uh, 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 it, for the better part of our session. Uh, that that need is what we call the, now the lending solutions. So you are in business, you have been able to transact, you are able to pay and correct. But you have a deficiency in terms of uh, in terms of expanding. You want to grow the business. You have a deficiency in terms of working capital. You need an asset, just as we discussed. Then we bring in what we call the lending solutions that come there to say and lending solutions. And I like the question that I've been asked earlier over title is to say banks even uh, uh, have unsecured facility. You don't necessarily have to have a to have a title. You don't have to have a security. We consider what we call unsecured facilities, unsecured overdrafts and secured term loans. We also have secured, like what we talked of, uh, you have a title and you don't to, 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 to whatever, to, to, to press that title as security to the bank. We have what we call asset finance, just as discussed in the earlier quiz. An asset finance helps you purchase a motor vehicle, what is what you call a movable asset, or sometimes movable. It, it be a motor vehicle, it will be a machinery, it will be if, if you are in, uh, in, in medical, the dentist pass, you need a dent, dentist tool, a kit, all those things that, um, that are considered as, um, as, as movable assets will be financed through uh, asset financing. Then we have mortgages, and mortgages are very key in terms of property acquisition, be it a house, be it a rent that you want to build into the future or build a ready-made ready house, or you can acquire land and, and later do, do the construction as you continue. So, so mortgage is part of the lending solutions that we have. And then we have trade finance. Trade finance are several solutions that facilitate you as a, as a business person in terms of the trading. Most trade will be have, you'll have people who do a trade, uh, what we call LPO and invoice discounting. You have an order to supply, and you'd want to, to be financed to supply. You have supplied, and you'd want to be facilitated to move to the next supply. That is what we call LPO and invoice discounting. Then you have what we call letters of, of credit in trade finance that would also help you in terms of importation. And letters of, of credit is these are documents, these are instruments that we give as a bank on behalf of the borrower. Uh, to the person selling, and most trade happens when we are doing international trade. Although, of, of course, also although it also happens in uh, locally, but when you're doing international trade, we will be able to the bank will give comfort to the person selling to the other side that once they supply goods, the, the bank will pay. So those are documentations that it's, that's a document that happens between is an instrument that uh, is written between the bank and uh, and, and uh, the bank of the of, of the seller the other side, just to help you secure the goods. The beauty of it. 
is that you are assured on the quality, you are assured on the timely supply of goods, all those things that, uh, that you would want to see as a, as, a, as, as a buyer. And lastly, is what we call mobile renting. And I think is what Sam was referring to earlier as e credit. This is a short term facility that is available 24 7 at the comfort of your phone. You don't have to come to the bank, you can apply. And the way it works is that for this, this facility, you, you, you have, we give you a score based on the, the way you operate your account for you to, 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 to have that because most of us would have, uh, would have what you call emergency, emergencies coming up in the middle of the night uh, before the banks open or even on, on holidays over, over the weekend when the banks are not, uh, are, not, are not operating, you're able to borrow from the bank even up to 2 million as a business person. As an individual, you can borrow up to 500 if the salary is coming to us. And as a business, if all your turnovers are coming to your, to your package account there that you talked of the transactional account, then you have up to a billion shillings that is available to you 24 seven. But this is also based on a positive score, which you calculate based on the banking that you, you share with the bank. So, so those are the three solutions, the transactional solutions, the payment and collection solutions, and of course, the lending solutions that uh, are available for business mm. people. Very Back good. To you, and thank you. Very good. Thank you. I think that you've really captured it in a very neat way. So if you actually have your phone and you're using a computer, you can just take a picture of this. But also this will be sent to you because this we want to educate you on, on how you can get the help that you need. Now, um, one or two people have been saying in the chat, I need to ask a particular question. Please ask the question now. So we're going to turn it over to our Q&A now. OK, so it's our Q&A. And then we'll get into a call to action, okay? Q and A. If you have a question, this is your we're in good time right now. So I want to respond to some of your questions, okay? Um, some Kenneth says I belong to, and maybe Moses and Peter. At this point, I can invite you back, Peter. Um, Moses, uh, let me see. Kenneth says I belong to bronze package, but would wish to move to silver package. Well, I mean, I guess the question is, what does it take? move from bronze to silver uh, Moses or Peter yeah, Moses, yeah. Maybe? Okay. let me take it uh, that is automatic and uh, for that customer we will advise them to see the branch uh, uh, silver comes with a better better a better offering a better better benefits of, uh, higher benefits for you so see your branch manager see your business banker we facilitate the movement from bronze to, to silver very good there's someone else asking, I have a loan of 150K and the balance remaining is 50. Can I get a top up? If I have a loan of 150, but I have balance 50, am I in position to get a top up? Uh, I think the straight answer, yes, you are eligible to get a top up. Okay. I guess pending a further discussion on what the, the terms of that 50 would look like and the future plans for the loan, I guess. Would you say, Moses? Yeah, yes. Uh, let's say, I'm saying they are eligible to, to, to qualify. They are eligible for the, for the top up, subject to terms and conditions based on the performance of the of the of the, of the previous loan, and also the need. We will also look at the need, and uh, if it's if it's uh, if it's on mobile, they can apply on mobile. It's applied through the branch. They can visit the branch. Okay. Um. Someone else is asking: Do you have products for marginalized groups who are in business? For instance, people with uh, disabilities. Is that a package? Is there a package for people like like this? Yes, we we have we have solutions for all all, all people, uh, and uh, what, what the special groups like uh, people with disability. I think is a, is an area that uh, as a bank we are, we we are we, we do have solutions for them, and basically they will fall into the category of of the packages that we talked of. They have their own facilities. We have been able, we have enabled them in terms of operating the the the. the the mobile facilities that that I talked of, so we do take care of them also under under the under the offerings that we have as a bank. Very good. Um, how can you do you can you help an individual who wants? So what? Yes, I thank you for Moses. The quick responses. What I'm doing is very quickly answering questions and want to take as many as possible. So put them in the chat or in the Q and A. I'll be reading them out. Uh, this one is: How can you work with someone who wants a business loan but does not have? A memorandum of understanding with the bank. Somebody who wants a business loan but does not have a memorandum of, uh, of understanding. 
I'm not I'm not very clear, but I guess the I guess the question is based on uh, they, they, they are not they are not they do not have a bank account. I think I think that's what uh, maybe they are driving at. Okay. So okay. if you're in business, if you're in business, you are operating the business, you may not be having a bank account. We do consider subject to opening the account with us and we factor yeah. in the transactions of the other account also. If you are banking elsewhere, we also look at your statement, but you have to open an account with us for us to start that relationship. Okay, very good. Um, if I open a, an, a bank account with Corp Bank, how long does it typically take to access a loan? What are the factors that determine that period also? Uh, some, I, I think I've sort of answered that in saying that we can also look at the other, you can open and uh, in two, three months time based on uh, the turnovers and the statements that are coming okay. from the other bank, we will be able to support you. Okay, very good. Let me see, I'm just looking at the Q&A section. Um, just, just a second, Moses. So I see, Peter, I see you're responding. Um, maybe just go ahead and respond on the microphone. Moses has a question. Can you allow me to get a top up to boost? What are the what are the conditions that are required for to get a top up? Peter, Peter, can you speak to that a little? I see you're typing, but I, it may just be easier for you to switch on your mic and, and respond. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Conditions. Um, the question is conditions for a top up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and and I see also uh, Moses have um, talked about it. Uh, yes, yeah. we support. Uh, top ups and uh, majorly we just look at how then you'll be able to repay the other loan and then we're also looking at the repayment ability currently because um, we look at your cash flows are uh, there still bankings coming to us uh, but then uh, again uh, if the loan was say up to one million then we want to give you uh, some time to pay maybe up to five hundred thousand to say fifty percent and then we come in and we look at then the needs that you have and we look at the current trading levels, and then we also are able to support you. It is quite easy for you to get a top up loan. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Moses, a question. Maybe Peter, I guess I could just ask you to stay here. Moses, can, can one use a statement of another bank to be issued a loan with Copa? Yes, we do use subject to, subject to the customer opening account with us, the business account with us. We can consider. The, the turnovers or the bankings in the other in the other institutions. Okay, very good. Um, Peter, let me see. Peter, could you comment on the mobile? Oscar in the chat says mobile Elons seem to have expensive interest. Would you comment on that? Okay. Um, I, I think Oscar is just to indicate. I think if there is um a very convenient and a very affordable loans for business is the e-credit because uh, as a bank, we are still uh, regulated by a central bank on all the lendings. Uh, so, so I think it's quite affordable loans. We still regulated. The only thing we do is we also charge maybe for the insurance uh, for that particular loan, but they are not expensive. We look at uh, the cost that maybe you incur when you're applying maybe physically, you might actually realize it is uh, more affordable. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Rosemary, you have a question that is not clear. Kindly, I really i have seen your, your it's what you're asking is urgent. Please make it a clear question. I will read it out right now, but kindly restate your question about financing for export solutions. What's the specific question I can ask uh, our, our, our Moses or Peter? But in the meantime, Colin says, hope the government will nominate uh, Moses and Peter as the administrators of the Hustler Fund. <laughs> okay, thank you, Colin. Let me go back to the questions. Hussein is asking, um, maybe Moses, Hussein is asking, can I apply for a working capital loan if I have an existing MCOP cash loan? Yes, uh, Hussein, it's possible. As far as you have, we are able to prove the repayment ability for the two facilities. Okay, okay, very good. That's a short and quick answer. Um, Peter, someone has an account with Corp, but the LPO cannot be financed because the company he supplied has no MOU with Corp Bank. Is there a way to get around that? Thank you, thank you, 
Sam, uh, in, in regards to the LPO financing, I think we also look at uh, some of the institution that you are supplying to, uh, and, and, it, and most of them we have MOUs with. My advice is that we would want to have a closer conversation with you on this so that we understand uh, where you want to uh, supply. And uh, in case we are not able to finance you, then we want to want to look at what other alternative solutions that we have that uh, can facilitate you also to be able to supply uh, the LPO that you had. So uh, maybe we could, uh, I'll be able to share the our email, uh, business banking department email, so that then we can have a, uh, a discussion and see what then we're able to do to support you. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, as usual, I want to highlight the people who have been here for all the previous uh, sessions. Others are here for the first time. One of the people who are here, who, are, who is here for the first time is Josephine Nyangao. Welcome, welcome, and thank you for staying the whole period. You, Josephine has a question. I have an e-loan with, uh, with COP, but she defaulted. How, is it possible for her to get another loan or what are the conditions? What, how can she go about that, Moses? Uh, sorry, Moses, I think you're on mute. Sam, if you could have you have the Josephine, e yes, Josephine had an e-loan and she defaulted at one particular time, but would like to get another loan. What are the conditions? that she needs to consider before that can happen? Uh, I think number one is that uh, we, we look at the bankings, uh, specifically for e-loans, we look at your bankings for the last six months, consistency. If you defaulted and uh, you, you didn't go beyond 21 days, you are eligible. If it's beyond 21 days, I would invite, I would want to invite you to, 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 to talk to your branch manager, your business banker, they will advise you on the other available options. But uh, that is if you've only defaulted beyond 21 days. Okay, very good. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I'll just maybe let me just double check. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, Peter, for all the help. Um, Rosemary, I'm still waiting. I feel like your question is very important, but I need to ask it in a very clear way. For now, though, Moses, let me know if this makes sense to you. Rosemary is asking, uh, I think Moses has been to my branch. She didn't, she was not able to get the help that she needed. Um, how she's asking, please address my traders financing for export solutions. Maybe Moses, I can just ask you to make a general comment on that. When it comes to traders financing for export solutions, what key things do we need to look out for? For export solutions? Yes, yes. I may not be very specific because it's not come out very clear, but uh, to say yes. that we also do support um, traders and specifically people who are, who are exporting. And one of the things that we do, we the first item that uh, the, the first support that you offer is correction. Once they, once they, they export, I think the payment then we facilitate through payment through the accounts, correction of the of the proceeds of the sales proceeds from where from uh, from the buyer outside there. Then in terms of now credit facilities, we have available facilities that help us in terms of supporting supporting the exporters. So one of them is uh, what we call supply chain financing. And if this is in case somebody is doing aggregation, buying like uh, maybe you are doing fresh produce, I'm, I'm not clear in what, what business they are doing, but buying, uh, buying uh, aggregating fresh produce or whatever items that you are getting from, from, from several people would help you in terms of now paying for that, would help you in terms of working capital, would help you in terms of the charges that you cut the port while exporting or importing. So, so, so there are several facilities that come in there based on the kind of business that uh, that that uh, that uh, that you are doing in export, but uh, but again, Sam is to invite that customer to visit yeah. to visit uh, to visit to visit our branch so that we can really understand and also mm -hmm. let them pick the business banking email uh, so that we can have that discussion and uh, and uh, we have a fruitful discussion in terms of under understanding the business and the specific support that they would require. But my assurance is that we do we do support exporters and importers. Very good. Fiona, I hope that was helpful. We would have loved to be more specific, but under the conditions, we are, I hope that uh, it was helpful. All right, so we're coming to the end, and I'll turn it over to Moses to just walk us through some call to action steps, and then we'll give you the final contacts that we have available to you for any inquiries or any information that you may need. And also after Moses, I will be sharing the links for the opportunity for the AMI opportunity for the GYB, the Grow Your Business Opportunity as well as Noni, our speaker's website. So Moses, please walk us through and then we'll 
be ending in about two or three minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sam. Let me take this opportunity to thank our customers and uh, just as we close, some call to action in terms of the of uh, uh, let me call it the next steps and uh, the, the key thing. And I think uh, even Noni Noni emphasizes on this is the issue of maintaining a close relationship with your banker, the branch manager, and uh, these people will provide more information in terms of what would support you. I wanted to share a lot of information, but unfortunately, time will not allow. And this this these materials are available in the in the in, in the core bank uh, online MSME online portal. You can visit core bank online M M MSME portal. You can visit your bankers. You can visit your branch managers just to click on more. Number two is to ask anybody of us, anyone of us here who do not have an MSME package. I think it will be important also to visit your branch and open an MSME package account. It gives you a lot of benefits that are tied into all what we said, the transaction, the, the collections and payments, and also the lending solutions. So it helps you in terms of all somebody in terms of the business. And that's why it's called an MSME package, either bronze, silver, or, or gold. And I, I think the other key thing is uh, uh, in terms of paying debt, please leverage on payment solutions that uh, in cooperative bank, to ensure you bank all your incomes and uh, ensure you have timely repayment. This helps you in terms of determination for qualification of debt. If it's e-credit, e what you call the, the, the mobile room, uh, the transactions that come in, if it's even the bank, the facilities that you apply, in, you do apply in the branch, it's very important. So ensure you take advantage of payment collections that helps you in terms of receiving and paying out your money to, to your customers. And uh, I, I think last is to ask that uh, if you have any financial needs uh, for, 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 for whatever, for, for borrowing needs that uh, you have, uh, I invite all of us to visit our branches. We have uh, 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 quite sub substantial facilities available for business customers and even at personal level, uh, the, those who are in, in employment, but more so where I sit, I support the business customers. See, see the business bankers in the branch, what the person we call a business banker in the branch or your branch manager. They will advise you on the available solutions then that you have that can support you. Thank you, thank you, and back to you, Sam. Very good, thank you so much. So it's 12.30 right now. We are exactly on time. I'll just take one or two other minutes. Now in the chat, um, so we've had quite a beautiful session and I especially like the fact that we got to know our bank a bit. And I'm going to be short in, in a short while telling you a bit about what you can expect from the next session. And I think you're going to love it. But before I do that, I want to draw your attention to the chat. You're going to find two links. One is to the great opportunity to work with AMI. There is a full scholarship that's available for all your businesses. And we'd like to ask you to maximize that. So there the link is. The link is in the chat. It's africanmanagers.org slash DYB, grow your business. If you'd like to apply for that, it's a full scholarship where you can get lots more training and also, especially when it comes to non-finance. Um, <laughs> Steven says, Sam, you have not been fair. Some of us have questions, but I've not been attended to. Stephen Mogwe, I promise I have, a, I have very good news for you, okay? The second link is to a website that uh, our guest, Noni, is, uh, is, is, uh, is great with uh, guiding people through wealth management and coaching and training and facilitating. On a, from personal to business, from investment to, to just personal spending, please visit the website and support our business as well. Get the help that you need from, from their team, uh, their courses and so on. And now, in response to Stephen Mugwe, Stephen, I recognize that we have such a short time. We're trying to cover as much as possible. But the good news, Stephen, and everyone else who's listening and watching, the good news is next time we come together next Thursday, we are going to dedicate that particular episode to uh, knowing your bank. So you know how you have KYC, know your customer? Now I think the customer, it's important to know your bank. So we're going to dedicate, we'll have a lot more time, about an hour, full hour, instead of just 20 minutes, full hour, just asking all kind of questions. And there's a link in the chat that Peter has posted. So that's where the photo is. You have to see what that is going to look like. And yeah, so come early next time, like you've done today, we'll spend the whole time just getting to know our bank and uh, just asking all sorts of questions about loan facilities, about how the bank can help us, any and every question, prepare for next week's Thursday and we'll have a great session. Stephen, let me know if that makes you happy. I hope it does. But while you do that, um, uh, final contacts, and this is the last slide for today. 
say thank you, like Moses has said. And if you want to get the call into, in touch with the bank, this is some of the detail that you will need. But also if you'd like to get in touch with our project coordinator, Fiona Maina, who is running behind the scenes this whole program, I ask that you reach out to her. So at this point, Peter started us off with a prayer. I'm going to ask him to come back, say a prayer, and then we'll end uh, with the close. Peter. Many, many thanks, uh, Sam, uh, Moses, uh, Noni, and, and our participants for such a great session. Uh, we did appreciate and we're looking forward for the next one. So let's bow for a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, again, we really want to thank you for your goodness. You've been together with us through the session. You've given us insights, and we pray that, Lord, you will help us even manage our businesses better. May you continue to be together with us, continue to give us new insights that will continue to help us thrive in our businesses. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Amen. and have a very good rest of the day.